Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. It's That's it, Paddington. Move the ears to the left. <laughs> Stop right there. Really, Henry? We must do something about this television. It's on its last legs. So am I. Well, it wouldn't hurt to have someone take a look at it. No point throwing out a perfectly good TV. And in newsworthy notables, people should be aware of a prowler, Harry Harry, who has a taste for sandwiches. This sounds very familiar to me. I may be hairy, Mrs. Bird, but I'm not a Harry. After robbing his victims, Harry Harry he makes a sandwich using ingredients from the pantry. I think I'd better hide my jars of marmalade, just in case Hairy Harry pays us a visit. Now, where's a safe place? I know. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Oh. Eating 18 jars of marmalade? What were you thinking? I saved one jar in case I get hungry while you're out, Mrs. Bird. I should try and get a bit of sleep, dear. We'll be back soon. At last! I thought they would never go. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Curry. Good day, Bear. I was wondering if I might watch your television. A programme will start in a bit, but I rather want to see. I'm sure Mr. Brown wouldn't mind. He's always saying that you might as well live here for all the things you borrow. Yes, well... What? How dare he say that about me? I'm afraid the picture isn't very good. Perhaps you wouldn't mind keeping the sound down. I'm trying to sleep. Ha! Keep the sound down, indeed. It's even worse than the picture. <gasps> You must be uh, Mr. Brown. I'm here to fix your television and install the new aerial. Ah, well, it's lucky, really. I had a cancellation and was able to fit you in today instead of tomorrow. Uh, yes, very lucky. Right this way. Here we are. It's crying out for some help. Ah, uh, I know this model very well. Very well indeed. They're very tricky, Mr. Brown. Very tricky. <clears throat> yes, well, uh, do you think if I lend a hand, it could be done more quickly? Two pairs of hands are better than one, I always say. Let's be at it. I think we've found the problem, Mr Brown. Mr Brown? <gasps> oh, pardon me, uh, you were saying? It's this tube. But let's install the aerial first. With a bit of help, it shouldn't take long. It's not long now before my programme starts. We ought to have a perfect picture by then. What's that noise? Oh, there's someone up there. But who? It can't be a prowler. Harry, Harry! You're a big help, Mr. Brown. I wish there were more people in the world like you. Mr. Brown? Ah, yes! Helpful, Mr. Brown. Ah, that's me. But let's hurry, shall we? 
Prowler. Perhaps it is Hairy Harry, and he's got a partner in crime. That'll teach you. You won't get out of there in a hurry. Time to get reinforcements. Help! Police! It's about Hairy Harry. He's at 32 Windsor Gardens. No, he won't get away. I've locked him in. Oi! Open up! What is all this? Suddenly, I'm feeling much better. I'd say it's time for a sandwich to celebrate. Do you know how to get out of your own attic, Mr Brown? No. I mean, yes. I mean, uh, this door has always been tricky. Oh, dear. It looks like Mr Curry didn't like his programme. I'd better see if I can fix this before the Browns get home. Uh-oh. Mr Brown? Yes, officer. What seems to be the problem? We had a report that Harry Harry the Prowler is in your house. What? You're certain? Aha! See this? Harry Harry's calling card. He's here all right. But where? Help! 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 Oh dear. I hope Addington is all right. Well, then look, someone's coming. At last. You there, don't try to escape. Now come on down and don't try anything funny. After you. You can't be hairy, Harry. You aren't very hairy. I'm not. I'm a TV repairman. And you are? I'm the next door neighbour. You said you were Mr Brown. You mean there are two Mr Browns? Uh, uh, yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, no. Well, what do you mean? Mr Brown, could you come here and sort this out? I wasn't expecting you today. There was a cancellation. Curry, what are you doing here? All I wanted to do was watch my programme, and now I've missed it. This was all that bear's fault. If this sandwich doesn't belong to Harry Harry, then I'd like to know whose it is. I think it may belong to Paddington, but he's upstairs in bed. Blimey, look at that. There's something funny inside your telly. It's... Harry Harry! No, he's in the attic. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Everyone I know thinks it's a very good idea. Well, almost everyone. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Ah! Getting rid of this lot's going to cost me a fortune. Ouch! Bear! Good morning, Mr Curry. What are you doing, Bear? It's something I picked up in India. India? Hmm. These should come in handy. What are you talking about? It's an idea I got there while collecting stories for Mr Gruber's book. If I remember correctly, it all started with a very long bus ride. I'm beginning to wish we'd taken a taxi, Mr Brown. I'm beginning to wish I hadn't eaten quite so much breakfast, Mr Gruber. I hope the rock gardens at Chandigarh are worth seeing. There's nowhere on Earth quite like it. I'm counting on you to take some good photographs. You can rely on me, Mr Gruber. I wonder when we'll get there. Excuse me, please. Pardon? Pardon? Excuse me, can you tell me how much further it is to... Oh! Amigo! Pardon me. Excuse me, please. Wait! You've still got Mr. Gruber! Until Mr. Gruber finds his way back, I'd better get started taking the photographs. Huh? I wonder what Mr. Gruber would like pictures of. You can't see the gardens for tourists. Excuse me. Excuse 
me. Oh, my! No wonder he's stone deaf. He is stone. This must be what Mr. Gruber wanted me to photograph. The sculptures. Could you lean to your right a bit? <laughs> it's like talking to a brick wall. <laughs> Hold it there. That's perfect. Don't move. <laughs> Aren't the sculptures wonderful? And to think they are all made from things people throw away. Bob, Bob, look! The sculpture with the funny hat is taking a picture of the others. Funny hat? I'll have you know my uncle gave me this. It was handed down. <gasps> the statue has come to life! An evil demon! I'm not an evil demon. I'm a bear from darkest Peru. A bear statue ah! is coming alive! He is chasing us! Run! What is this nonsense? The bear statue is not alive. It's made of tin, metal, plastic and clay. Someone is undoubtedly playing a prank. I will telephone the authorities. Mr. Gruber's right. The rock garden at Chandigar is like nowhere else. That's a very colourful peacock sculpture. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was... <coughs> real! Look at all that rubbish. I don't know what Mrs. Burb would say. Spoiling a beautiful park like this. While I wait for Mr. Gruber, I think I'll do a little tidying up. Chandigarh! I have it on good authority. Some practical joker in a bear suit is scaring all the people. Oh dear, Mr. Brown. Phew. Check it out, honey. Artists that work. Get over there for a photo. You don't mind, do you, buddy? You know, back home, this would be just another junkyard. How you guys built this great place entirely out of garbage is beyond me. Garbage? You know what I mean. Making all these sculptures out of recycled trash like you do. Oh, it's great. <sighs> Mr. Brown, what are you up to? Mr. Gruber, thank goodness you're here. I thought I was helping out, but now I'm not sure. Don't worry, Mr. Brown. We'll soon put things right again. Not only did Mr. Gruber show me how to put things right, with his help, we even went one better. Excellent work, Mr. Brown. I'd say we've made a lasting impression. Are you sure about the design, Mr. Gruber? It looks oddly familiar. Oh. Now you mention it, who do we know with a jaw like that? I must say he looks very bad-tempered. Mr. Mr. Curry! Curry. A statue of me? You made a statue of me? Entirely out of rubbish. It wasn't difficult once we found an old car tire for your jaw. And people from all over the world pay good money to come and see it? Oh, yes, Mr. Curry. There was a big crowd when we left. I'd like to support your recycling project, Bear. So I'm going to let you build a statue of me in my front garden. I'll even donate the rubbish. That's very kind of you, Mr. Curry. Perhaps your front garden will become as famous as the rock garden in Chandigar. I'm counting on it, Bear. I am off to take a bath, and I want that statue finished when I'm done. Sundays just fall into place. My rubbish taken care of for free, and a statue of myself into the bargain. I wonder how much I can charge people to look at it. I'm almost finished, Mr. Curry, and I must say the resemblance is uncanny. Uncanny? <laughs> How about moving this thing? Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Curry. I used Mr. Brown's quick drying cement. Once it dries, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> It's a pity you've already had your bath, Mr. Curry. Free demonstration.
frustrations. Those are two of my favorite words. Can I go and see the demonstrations while you do your shopping, Mrs. Bird? I don't see why not. But mind you don't get into any trouble. Me? Get into trouble? I don't see how you can get into trouble in a bargain basement. If anyone can, it's a certain young bear I know. And don't go spending all of your money either. Don't worry. Bears are good at finding bargains. I'll come and fetch you when my shopping's done. Stress got you down. The Stress Away Miracle Mask promises hours of stress-free relaxation. Just put it on, close your eyes, and drift away to paradise. Ah, just what I need, a volunteer. One size fits all. This reminds me of Pin the Tail on the Donkey. I hope everyone knows how to play. Hey, how am I supposed to pin the tail on if you won't keep still? I think I may get Judy one of these masks for her next birthday party. This amazing slicer dicer makes perfect potato chips every time. Blades look awfully sharp. Is it safe? Madam, it's so safe a child could use it. Or even a bear. You, sir, would you mind showing this lady how it's done? Certainly. Oh, you see, oh, it's wonderful. If this inexperienced bear can use it, oh, imagine what you can do. You're a natural. Ever consider joining the trade? Mrs. Bird always says bears drive a hard bargain. Ah, my parcel! It's been shredded! Actually, it's been squashed. That's certainly a bargain. A slicer dicer that also shreds and squashes. It not only looks good, it tastes good! Only one application of instant one-dab cleaning fluid, and this old carpet looks like new. Developed in space, used by astronauts. There's nothing on Earth that can't be improved by instant one-dab cleaning fluid. Mrs. Bird is always complaining about marmalade stains. Take this filthy old piece of felt. Filthy old piece of felt? Most of you would have thrown it away. But one dab of my cleaning fluid will make it like new. Hold on. That's my hat you've got. Oh, I didn't realise anyone was wearing it. I thought it was one of my old scraps. Old scraps? Well, now that I have it, perhaps you'd like me to get rid of your stains. Get rid of my stains? I'll have you know it's taken me a long time to collect these stains. Some of them have been handed down. You can't hand a stain down. Bears do. This one was made by my uncle in Peru. Remove my stains, indeed. <gasps> I don't know what my uncle would say if he knew. <laughs> that smells like something cooking. How many times have you ruined your fried egg in the morning because it's stuck to the pan? Well, just watch this. Buy one of my magic non-stick fry pans and nothing, I repeat, nothing will stick ever again. Nothing at all? You don't believe me? I'll tell you what, sir. Why don't you have a go? <laughs> that certainly didn't stick. To the pan. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> Nothing sticks. Excuse me, I haven't finished. Oh. You believe me? I haven't tried a pancake yet. <gasps> Here, what have you done with my pancake? What have I done with it? That was my demonstration pancake. You did say it was a magic fry pan. Perhaps you didn't use enough batter. <laughs> ah. 
My coat! I demand to see the sales manager! Sales manager to the bargain basement. Right away, please. Sounds like there's trouble down below. Trouble? Paddington! <laughs> Mercy me! Where has that bear got to? I think I've had enough bargains for one day. <clears throat> Am I correct, sir, in believing you are responsible for all this commotion? Now, you can't go blaming that bear. I'm sure he was only trying to help. Blame? I'm here to offer my congratulations. Thanks to his efforts with the pancakes, we've sold our entire stock of one death stain remover. Oh, dear. I was hoping to get some for you, Mrs. Bird. Since he demonstrated that nothing sticks to our magic fry pans, they've been selling like hotcakes. And because of the panic he caused, our stress away miracle masks sold out in minutes. Oh, he's a marketing genius. I have only one question. Any ideas how to move our slicer dicers? They'd be very handy for making marmalade. The chunks are the worst part. Seeing as you've been so helpful, I'd like you to have free samples of all our new products. Uh, the pancake. Ooh. Why don't you try some of the One Dab Stain Remover? It's a real bargain. <laughs> <laughs>